Hello everybody. Welcome to our special session on Lorentz Curve and Robin Hood Index. This is a continuation of the Lorentz Curve and Gini Index lesson. I recommend to watch it first or at least get an understanding of the Lorentz Curve as this is needed in the second part of the lecture. In the previous video we talked about distribution of height among the members of Lorentz family. Here is the extended family Anne, Bob, me, Cindy and Doug. For the Robin Hood index we want to redistribute whatever we measure and height is kind of difficult to redistribute. The large gives some of the height to the small. So let's rather talk about wells. We have five persons and they have one, two, four, five and eight coins. It is best to order them from poor to rich on a line. Each person get, goes to the number indicating his or her, her wells. Next enters Robin Hood. He steals from the rich and gives to the poor. For instance, he might steal one coin from Duck and give it to little Anne. Then Duck has to step one step to the side on number 7 and Anne goes to number 2. Then another coin goes from Duck to Anne. Then a coin from Duck to Bob. Another coin from Duck to Bob. And finally Robin Hood steals a coin from Cindy and gives it to little Anne. Now all persons have four coins. There is no rich and poor anymore and Robin Hood has to find another family to redistribute the wells. Five coins have moved, have changed their owners. Five coins out of the total of 20. This ratio 5 over 20 is called the Robin Hood index. It is also called Ritchie index or Schutz index or Hoover index or Pietra index or Lindell index. This index is easy to calculate. First we need to calculate the mean or average wells before Robin Hood enters. It is 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 8 divided by 5. The total wells 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 8 equals 20 divided by the number of persons. So the average wells is 4 and this is how much each person will have after Robin Hood has done his work. Next we separate the population into poor below average and rich, above average. In this example I am neither poor nor rich, just average. Obviously Robin Hood transfers money from rich to poor. N gets 3 coins and Bob gets 2, so the poor get 5 coins together. Cindy gives 1 coin and Doug gives 4, so the rich together give 5 coins. Of course, what the rich together give is the same what the poor together get. Therefore, the Robin Hood index can be calculated in two ways. The sum of all differences between average wells and actual wells for all poor persons divided by the total wells of the population or the sum of all differences between actual wells and average wells for all rich persons divided by the total wells of the population. There is another way to obtain the Robin Hood index provided we don't have the distribution of money, but rather the Lorentz curve. Remember that the Lorentz curve is a curve in the unit square where the x-values indicate parts of the total population and the y-values indicate parts of the total money. If the Lorentz curve goes through the point x, y, then the poorest x of the population own y of the total money. If the Lorentz curve goes through the point 0.4, 0.2, for instance, then the poorest 40% of the population own 20% of the total money. In our example, the Lorentz curve is constructed as follows. The poorest fifths, n, owns 1 over 20 of the total wells. The poorest two fifths own 3 over 20 of the total wells. The poorest three fifths own 7 over 20 of the total wells. The poorest four fifths own 12 over 20 of the total wells. And the whole population, of course, owns 20 over 20 of the total wealth. Then we connect these points by straight lines. Let's now focus on the vertical distances between the Lorentz curve and the diagonal. It indicates how much of the total amount the poorest x of the population has to get, such that after some redistribution inside this group, each one has just the average. Any three coins. 3 over 20 of the total wells, 
The poorest two fifths need three plus two coins, five over twenty of the total wells. The poorest three fifths need three plus two plus zero coins, five over twenty of the total wells again. The poorest four fifths need three plus two minus one coins, four over twenty of the total wells. Note that this group needs less than the smaller one considered before, since Cindy can give one coin to the poorer members of the group. That means that this distance between diagonal and Lorentz curve will increase until we are at the x value where people have the average as the average population, and to the right of that point the distance will decrease. At this x value, where the distance is maximal, this distance expresses just the Robin Hood index. The position x where the maximal vertical distance occurs is the location of the average person having just average wealth or income. In real world income and wealth distributions, almost always the x value corresponding to the part of the population with average income is higher than 50%. Almost always, more than 50% of the population has or gets less than the average wealth or income. Another measure of inequality is a Gini index, which is defined as twice the area between Lorentz curve and diagonal. How are Gini index and Robin Hood index related? If we assume a fixed Robin Hood index, say 24%, different Lorentz curves can have this maximum vertical distance between Lorentz curve and diagonal of 0.24. Here are a few of them. Note that the area between Lorentz curve and diagonal varies, so different Gini indices are possible for the same Robin Hood index. The measures are not just proportional. The smallest area is obtained for such a triangular shape. This triangle has the same area than this area. Just build the area with sand and let it fall down. And this triangle area has a base length of 1 and the Robin Hood index as height. Therefore, the triangle has an area of 1 half times Robin Hood index. So the Gini index equals the Robin Hood index here. For other Lorentz curves, the area is larger. It is largest for this example. So we can conclude that the Robin Hood index is always less or equal to the Gini index. Thanks for listening.